Now, again, please give me your attention up here because the first thing we're going to tackle is a 45, 45, 90, and then I will tackle the 30, 60, 90 and show you the exact relationship. All right. But again, you don't really have to write anything down right now. You just kind of have to pay attention. All right. So here we go. I'm going to draw a little figure over here and then we'll discuss uh, exactly what's taking place. All right. So I'm going to try to draw a square. All right. And when I draw a square, all right, I'm pretty sure everybody in here can tell me that the angles right here are 90 degrees. All right. Now, just because we did a good job with our uh, quadrilaterals, you can tell me that if I were to draw the diagonal, all right, the diagonal of a square does what to the angles? Cuts them in half. Cuts them in half. The other way you could say is that because this is equal to this, this right here has to be 45 degrees, and this right here has to be 45 degrees. Is everybody with me on that? Yeah. All right. Now, because that is so, what we do is we say we have created a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. All right. Now, with that information, all right, you can tell me this is unknown. All right. That's simply the side of the square. And this is the other side of the square. All right. Now, because it is a square, we know those sides are equal. The thing that is missing is what? Is the hypotenuse. All right. It is the hypotenuse. So there is a relationship between the legs and the hypotenuse. All right. Now, from yesterday, if I have x there, does everybody agree that is the factor, the common factor, correct? So here's what I kind of want you to do, and then I'm going to go through the math. But this is how good I want you to be. This is the same as x times 1. This down here would be x times 1. So who can tell me what c is? c is what? x times radical 2. Perfect. x times radical 2. Now, of course, how did we know that? Because... X is what's the common factor, agree? All right, so then we just have A is 1 and B is 1. 1 squared plus 1 squared is 2. Square root of that is what? Square root of 2. All right, now let's say for whatever reason you're not understanding that. All right, here's the math. You would simply say X squared plus X squared is equal to C squared. And then you would say... 2x squared is equal to c squared. And then you would just take the square root of both sides. And you would say radical 2. And then the square root of x squared is what? x equals c. All right? Now, again, you had to listen to me on that. It's very important. It's going to save yourself a lot of time if you understand that. All right, so what is the relationship between the leg and the hypotenuse? The hypotenuse is always what? The square root of 2 times larger than the leg. Listen to what I just said. The hypotenuse is always the square root of 2 times larger than the leg. So if I said, for example, in this situation now, if I said this was 10, the other leg would be what? And then the hypotenuse would be 10 radical 2. That's how simple it is. That's all there is to it. All right? Now, another example here. If I said, come on now. If I said this hypotenuse was six radical two. 
Then the legs would be what? Six. I told you it's very simple. It would be six. All right, that's not that hard. All right. Now, here's where it might get a little bit tricky for some of you. If, if I said... If I said this was 4 radical 2. Come on now, here's where you have to understand radicals. So the hypotenuse would be what? 8. Exactly right. Come on now. Because I said 4 radical 2 times radical 2. Come on. What's radical 2 times radical 2? Two? 2. 2. And then 2 times 4 is equal to? Eight. Of course, the other leg would be what? Also, four radical two. All right. Now, one more time, or a couple more examples. All right. If I said, for example, this is five radical six, what would be the leg? Five, five, five radical three, exactly. Five radical three. Now remember, here's what I'm trying to get you to think about. Listen carefully now. To go from the leg to the hypotenuse, you're getting bigger. So you're multiplying by what? Radical two. To go from the hypotenuse to the leg, you are what? You are dividing by radical two. All right, that's what we're doing. All right. So again, if I said 5 radical 6 divided by radical 2, the radical 6 and radical 2 can simplify to 5 radical 3. All right? Good review of radicals. All right, now, one more thing here. Last one, and then we're going to go on uh, to the next one. All right, let's say, for example, I said this was 6. If the hypotenuse is 6, now I need some help with how do I find the leg. What would I do to the leg? Well, what's the rule? To go from the hypotenuse to the leg, we do what? Divide, Divide by, by radical 2. two. So everybody, at least, mm -hmm. you should be able to tell me this is 6 divided by radical 2. That's the very least. All right. Now you have to remember that the great mathematicians got together and said, for whatever reason, I don't know why even, you're not allowed to have square root of 2 or an irrational number in the denominator. So you have to rationalize the denominator. And so in order to do that, you simply multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 2. All right. And when you multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 2, you get 6 radical 2 over 2, which is the same as 3 radical 2. All right. So again, that's really as hard as it gets. So on a 45, 45, 90, all right, it's really easy to come up with the uh, rule, but it just simply says that the hypotenuse is always the square root of two times greater than the leg, or the leg is the hypotenuse divided by the square root of two. All right, does anybody have any questions? That's gonna save you a bunch of time if you can remember that. The other thing I try to remind kids of, sometimes they get confused with how do I remember there's radical 2 and how do I remember there's radical 3. I always try to tell kids there's two different angles here, so it's going to require a radical 2. In a minute, we'll be discussing the 30, 60, 90, and that has what? Three different angles, so there's going to be a what? A radical 3 involved. All right, is everybody with me on that? All right, so again, you can see, I think that's super, super easy. All right, super easy. So let's just go down and see what this is right here. All right, so let's just do this part, all right, of the 45. So for question number one, x is what? Seriously. 8 radical 2. Number 2, here we go. x equals what? 3. All right, number three, x equals? Four. I told you, this is super easy. Number four, uh-oh. Yeah, those of you guys who got that already in your head set, nine radical two, very good. All right, anybody have any questions with how we got uh, nine radical two? Um, if you rationalize the denominator, it would be like pi 
hard drive with me so that we can do the page on the right. Oh, yeah. Perfect. And you'll see the pattern after you do it a couple times. You'll see the pattern after you do it a couple times. All right. Number five, that would be what? Eight radical two. Eight radical two. Good job. All right, you can see the patterns. And if you don't see the pattern, I'm telling you, you just got to do it a couple times, then you'll see the pattern. If all you're doing is just write down 8 radical 2, because I said it's 8 radical 2, that's a problem. You should be able to tell me it's 8 radical 2. All right, now on number 6, we just say that's what? What is it? 24, thank you. All right, here we go, number 7. It says, in a, or if a 45, 45 degree, uh, 90 triangle has a hypotenuse of 12, then the leg would be what? Six radical two. Do I agree? Uh, determine the length of the leg if the hypotenuse is 25. Yep, 25 radical two over two. Very, very good. And yes, thank you, Walker. I should put inches down and over here. It would be units, right? And last one. The length of the hypotenuse uh, is 14. 14. So find the length of the hypotenuse if the length of... Oh, they left out a word, right? The length of a leg. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can't. You're right. I can't read. Okay, I can do math, I can't read. Okay, thank you very much. So it says, uh, find the hypotenuse. So thank you very much. It would be what? Thank you very much. 14 radical 2. Remember, we're going from leg to the hypotenuse. We're going to leg to hypotenuse. Okay, so again, I am telling you, that's how simple the 45, 45, 90 is. In your head, you just have to remember, if I'm getting bigger, I multiply by radical 2. If I'm getting smaller, divide by radical 2. That's how simple. All right? Now, the next one, all right, is a little bit more uh, difficult, all right, although it is still very easy, all right? So here's what I want you to do now. Just look up here for a second, all right? Just kind of watch me. All right, so what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying my best to create a equilateral triangle. All right, so this is an equilateral triangle. And so X, X, and X. Everybody good with that? All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the height. If I draw the height in here, which actually isn't a very good job. Try it again. If I draw the height, all right, that looks pretty good. All right, this length still down here is how much? What is that length? X, it's still X. All right, now just to make sure you understood what I said, all right. The measure of this angle is what? 60 degrees. The measure of this angle over here to the right base is what? 60 degrees. Now, because I said this was the height, that becomes a 90 degree angle, all right? And because that's a 90 degree angle, then the angles at the top would be both what? 30 degrees, and this is 30 degrees. Okay, now this is the important part, so kind of listen here for a second. Make sure you're focused in. All right. Now, what I need you to understand is technically now, I want to know what is the distance from here to here. Somebody tell me. Good. Half X. Is everybody good with that? Or we could just simply say it is X over 2. All right. How do we know it's X over 2? Because those triangles are now congruent. Do we agree? All right, which means that the two sides are congruent. I shouldn't say the two sides, but let me just make this clear. So if this whole thing is x, this is also x over 2, and that's x over 2. 
think that's pretty obvious. All right. So now what I'm trying to get you to understand is the relationship between the angle and the side. So 30 degrees is related to x over 2. Everybody agree with that? We kind of talked about that yesterday a little bit. And we would say that the x side is related to the what? To the 90 degrees. All right, you should know that. Now the problem is I'm missing this leg over here. All right, so here we go. We're missing B. Does everybody agree? Mm -hmm. All right, but we're still going to use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for B. So watch how nice this is. All right, and this requires you to be pretty good with fractions, which we all are, so this should be easy. So x over 2 squared plus b squared equals x squared. Now, let me know as soon as you don't know something. All right? Is everybody comfortable with that? Any issues? Come on, speak up now. All right, now I'm going to square x over 2, and that becomes what? x squared over... 4 plus b squared equals x squared. And now I'm going to do what? Oh, you could multiply by 4, but we're just going to combine terms, right? So I'm going to subtract x squared over 4, right? And I'm just going to write this up here just because I don't want anybody to be lost. So those cancel, all right? So b squared, now here's where for whatever reason, people are what, how did you get that? Come on now, if when I write the answer, or I don't say what right away, just think about it for a second. I'm doing x squared over, thank you. I'm doing x squared minus, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm doing x squared minus x squared over four. What is x squared minus x squared over four? Squared over Beautiful. That's exactly correct. 3x squared over 4. For those of you guys who are thinking about it, remember it's just 1 minus 1 fourth. Oh. Right? 1 minus 1 fourth. This is 1x squared, and we're subtracting what? 1 fourth x squared. That gives us what? 3 fourths x squared. And so now, what am I doing next? Taking the square root of both sides. All right, and then that will allow us to say that b is equal to square root of 3 and then x over what? Over 2. All right, so b is equal to x times square root of 3 over 2. That's very simple, very simple. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down for you again. And I'm now going to show you the relationship between A, B, and C, or the 30, 60, 90. All right? Now, how is that helpful? How is that helpful? Because if I said, for example, now here's where I need you to listen, just to make sure. If I said X was 10, what's the side opposite the 30 going to be? In other words, what's this side of the triangle going to be? Five. Exactly. And then what is the side opposite the 60? Which is this right here. It is, remember, 10 radical 3 over 2, which is what? 5 radical 3. So this is 5 radical 3. Now, again, like I said, that, that can be kind of tricky for kids, so I'm going to summarize for you real quick, all right? And again, it's very, very simple, very simple. On a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle, the hypotenuse is going to be considered X. Opposite the 30, is always half the hypotenuse and opposite the 60 is always half the hypotenuse times the square root of 3. And again, I'm going to even summarize it better for you, but that's what the relationship is.
All right, that's what the relationship is. All right, now here we go. In context now, this is what we're gonna be looking at. You'll be looking at a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And if you want, you can just kind of pay attention here for a quick second. If I'm drawing a 30, 60, 90 triangle, you should obviously be able to say this is 30 degrees. You should be able to say, obviously, that's 60, and this is 90. All right. If I tell you the hypotenuse is 10, then opposite the 30 is what? 5. Very good. Now, what I want to do is, for those of you guys who are better at understanding, what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to draw the equilateral triangle, even though that's not a very good idea. But does everybody see that? If you ever get stuck, that's how you could recreate it. Right? Does everybody see that? Because obviously, 5 is going to be half of 10. So we agree with that. And then you just have to remember that a radical 3 is involved because I told you there are three different angles, which requires a radical 3. In a 45, 45, 90, there are two different angles, so it requires a radical 2. Right? That's the easy way to remember it. So from the hypotenuse, to the 30, we say we just divide by 2. And then from the 30 to the 60, we just say we multiply by radical 3. So that's 5 radical 3. That's how really super simple. All right. Very easy. All right. Now one more time just to make sure you're seeing it correctly. Hypotenuse to the 30, divide by 2. From the 30 to the 60, you multiply by radical 3. All right, so now what I want to do is I'm just going to erase this thing real quick. And then I'm just going to give you some more examples. And then you can show me that you understand exactly what I'm talking about. Copy. All right, so if I said, everybody, if I said this was 10, then the hypotenuse would be what? 20. 20. And the 60 degree side would be? 10 radical 3. It really is that simple. All right? So here we go. If I say, for example, this is uh, 5 radical 3, then the opposite of the 30 would be what? 5. Then the hypotenuse would be what? 10. 10. Now, the only time it gets really difficult is if I throw something in there that doesn't have uh, a radical 3. So what I mean by that is this all right here we go so if i said for example this was six radical three then the hypotenuse would be what 12, 12 radical three thank oh, you very much all right because we're getting bigger so we multiply all right and that's how i also try to tell kids that's an easy way to remember if you're getting smaller you're going to divide if you're getting bigger you're going to what multiply all right so from this leg to this leg just multiply by radical three so that would just be 18. all right here we go let's see how much you understand uh from the hypotenuse listen 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 i need you to see that relationship go back up here let me let me enlarge this again so you can see what I'm I'm trying to show you. If I enlarge this again, please watch. To get from here to here, did I divide by 2? No. no. But if I were here and I wanted to go directly to here, I would what? Divide by 2. And then multiply by radical 3, right? But I don't ever tell kids to do that. I tell you, always go to the hypotenuse, to the 30, and then to the 60. It's very simple. All right, very simple. Quick. Um, so when you got 18, uh, did you use the x over 2? I multiplied 6 radical 3 times radical 3. Yeah. And what's radical 3 times radical 3? That's, yeah, I know how you got that, but would you say use 12 radical 3 since that's the x, and but 6 radical 3? I don't know what you're saying. Listen to me. To go from the 30 to the 60, 
you multiply by radical 3. That's the rule. Okay. Right? To go from the hypotenuse to the 30, you divide by 2. Yeah, I understand. Nope, you're good now. All right, so let's look back over here on my next example. So let's say this over here was um, 10 radical 6. Then the 30 degree side would be what? Come on. What would it be? Uh -uh. To get from here to here, what am I doing? Multiplying by radical 3. So if I go the other direction, I would just divide by radical 3. So it's what? There you go, guys. That's not hard. And then to get from the 30 to the hypotenuse, we... So that is what? 20 radical 2. All right, now I'm, I'm trying to draw something up here because in the past I haven't done as good a job um, because some kids, they're memorizing the formulas. And I'm trying to tell you, this really helped me out if I remember that this is just half of the equilateral triangle, correct? So then this relationship right here is always half of this. Is everybody with me on that? That's a very easy way to remember the rule. All right? It's a very easy way to remember the rule. All right? If you ever get stuck. All right? Now, I'm trying to think if there's something else. Okay, so let me make this. Let's just make this as hard as I can. Let's say this is, for example, 5 radical um, 5. If that's 5 radical 5, then the 30 degree side would be? 5 so radical 2. 5 over 2. Oh. Now, if you said 2.5 radical 5, I'm totally fine with that. But remember, as we progress, we just don't do decimal. We just leave it as a fraction. So now I have 5 radical 5 over 2, and then opposite the 60 would be what? 5 radical 15 over... Yes, guys. That, that's, that's, it's really that simple. And it, it'll never get that hard, but I'm just kind of reviewing with you your radical. All right, does everybody see? Very simple. Very simple. Go. No, no, because listen, the rule is you're multiplying by radical 3. So if I take 5 radical 5 oh, over 2 right. times radical 3 over 1, okay. it's not rationalized. Mm -hmm. It's not rationalized. All right, so now that I hear you totally got it, we'll just look over here real quick and see what's going on. All right, number one, X would be what? One. And Y would be? Yeah, now again, we're just writing it as a fraction. All right, we write it as a fraction. It's not really necessary to have the one. All right, we would just say that's the square root of three over two. All right, number two. Now, again, to me, this was easy. That's a 30. So Y automatically is 16, and X is 8 radical 3. All right, now, again, listen, I, I keep telling you guys, you've got to make your own decisions on this. All right, you should be knowing the answer and saying the answer before I write it down. I don't want you writing something down. All right, I want you telling me what the answer is. So on number three, I always make sure I understand the angle measures because they're not always drawn to scale. So they're trying to throw you off sometimes. All right, but in this case, the hypotenuse is 11, so X is what? 11 over 2, and Y is? I told you, it's very simple. All right, here we go, number four. All right, now again, I identified the 60, so this one's going to be easy, so X is? 9 and y is beautiful. All right. Now, I also want to say this is probably one of the most important things that we do in geometry, period, because you're going to use this information on all your standardized tests, SAT and ACT, and you're also, like I say, this is a big part, believe it or not, of pre-calculus. All right, a big part. If you can go in telling your teacher about the relationship of a 30, 60, 90, and a 45, 45, 90, you'll be ahead of most kids in the class. All right. Number five, here we go. I'm identifying this as 30. 
So X, I want you to tell me in steps what would be the thing that I do. What would I do? I know the answer. I want you to tell me how do I get from here to here. So I. Tell me. Go. So since you have to multiply by radical three to get to twelve, you can figure out what times. Like, yep. So how do I go backwards? Oh. Div yes. Divide yes. Divide Perfect. Three. Divide by radical three. So you're correct. Four radical three. That is absolutely correct. And then the hypotenuse would be what? Eight radical three. Everybody good? Yes. Well, you rationalize the denominator, right? So you multiply the top and bottom by radical 3. 12 radical 3 over 3. And you reduce the fraction. All right, again, identify here. This is 30. So y is how much? 10. And x is 10 radical 3. All right, here we go. Number seven, this is what we're talking about. In an equilateral triangle, the altitude or the height is 36. Determine the length of the side of the triangle. So basically what we're doing is this, guys. All right, we're drawing an equilateral triangle, which basically means I would like for you to just draw the 30, 60, 90 triangle, and that is 36. Be agree with me on that. So then this is your 60, this is your 30. So somebody tell me what the third degree side would be. Say it. 12 radical 3. Now how did I know that? Because remember, to go from here to here, we divide by radical 3. So the side of the triangle was what? Say it. 24 radical 3. All right, and then find the length of side of an equilateral triangle that has an altitude of 45, so it's the same exact problem. So if the side now is 45, or if the altitude is 45, then the 30 degree side would be how much? Well, now everybody should be telling me. So remember, this is the 60, this is the 30. So the 30 degree side would be what again? Wow, thank you, Walker. 15 radical 3. And so the actual side would be 30 radical 3. All right, guys, that's honestly as hard as it gets. All right, and believe it or not, a lot of people find that stuff very difficult. All right. But if you understand how we came up with the formula, it's very, very simple. All right, it's very simple. All right, so those of you guys, I want you to remember the most important thing, 30, 60, 90. I want you to remember that opposite the 90 is what? X. Opposite the 30 is X over 2. And opposite the 60 is X radical 3 over 2. <clears throat> but if you get... Or if you forget, you can easily reproduce that. All right. Now take the next five minutes for the first worksheet and five minutes for the second worksheet. You should be done in 10 minutes, which will give you time to get your homework done. All right. Quickly, as quick as you can.